Do you have enough Phoenix Downs? Yes. You have the ribbons equipped, right? <laughs> Did I equip the ribbons? <laughs> have you ever been playing a video game and then all of a sudden something so bonkers happens it makes you stop and go, what? What? Well, I think video games are where you should have that kind of EXP, but I'm talking about a real how did that happen kind of moment. Well, today, I want to tackle one of the most infamous of these moments in video game history. Welcome to the facility. Hey, that's my line. The what the what moment that I want to dissect, oh this wasn't even plugged in. The what the what moment that I want to dissect is from the classic and now remade RPG Final Fantasy VII, where in this scene, the villain with, let's admit, the amazing hair, unleashes the attack supernova on your pixelated party. It's a whole bunch of planetary cosmic chaos that leads to Earth's sun literally exploding. Where do we even start with something like this? How much damage would it actually do? Well, let's begin with the obliteration of Pluto. I had to pop out to restock the facility's restrooms. Apparently not everyone got the memo about our toilet paper episode. Anyway, if you ask an astrophysicist how to destroy a celestial object, because I have, they will usually give you the brute force approach, which is fine, it's just easier. You can imagine the complete annihilation of something like Pluto as taking every single piece of Plut's mass and flinging it off with enough energy such that it extends to infinity, never to return. This would require inputting to Pluto at least as much energy as is gravitationally holding it together. You would want to overcome the so-called gravitational binding energy. And thankfully, like a nerdier version of the company that sells too many dongles and overpriced laptops would say, there's an equation for that. To destroy a planet mathematically, we want to consider a planet as an infinite number of discrete shells with some amount of mass. We then perform a smidgen of calculus to integrate, sum up all of the forces on all of these shells. How much force it would take to successfully fling all of these shells into infinity. And if we do that, we get, bam, this equation, bam, th this one. The gravitational binding energy of a perfect sphere floating in space is equal to 3 times Newton's gravitational constant times the mass of the sphere squared. Divide all that by 5 times the body's radius. Plug in the numbers for Pluto and we get 5,800 septillion joules. Hey, that's my line, yeah, but you do. I'm going to assume that whatever Cephi is launching here, it has to have at least this much energy behind it to do what it does, plus the energy required to explode Jupa Jup. Even though the attack looks like it's just punching a hole through the planet and I don't really know what's going on, but this would require an additional ginormous amount of energy. In fact, it is so much harder to destroy Jupiter than it is to destroy Pluto, gravitationally speaking, that the sum of these two numbers is basically just the energy required to destroy Pluto. But Jupiter. remember that none of this energy is actually directed at the player in Final Fantasy. Sephiroth's initial salvo is just there to cause another cosmic catastrophe. The supernova. What? Did you dye your hair just for this video? Yeah, does it look cool? Is 7 even your favorite game in the series? I mean, no, I, I'm actually partial to... Oh, oh. Playing a video game almost always requires at least some suspension of disbelief. Where did I just appear from? Where was I storing this giant freaking sword on my body? It doesn't matter, it's a video game, but sometimes it is fun to extend video game logic out into the real world. For example, in this Final Fantasy attack that we're analyzing, it takes 60 seconds of in-game time for Sephiroth's attack to make it from Pluto to the Sun to Earth. In real life, the fastest anything can travel in the universe is light speed, the speed of light in a vacuum. And if this was a real attack actually traveling that distance, to travel that distance in that time, it would have to be going 300 times the speed of light. So if you thought Final Fantasy cutscenes were long before, if this was traveling at an accurate speed in the game, it would take over four and a half hours to finish and it would be so long and tedious and convoluted and it wouldn't make sense and then what would the game be metal gear solid <laughs> nano machines 
a supernova is unimaginably powerful. Just think about for a moment how much energy the Earth's sun is putting out second by second. Even 150 million kilometers away, that energy is able to sustain trillions upon trillions of organisms across billions of years and warm up an entire planet. Now consider that a standard supernova explosion releases the energy equivalent to all of the sun's energy that it will ever put out in its entire lifetime in just a few seconds. Now, I'm not sure exactly how Sephiroth caused the sun to go supernova. You can't just punch it with polygons and expect that to happen, but at least not all of this energy would go towards disintegrating cloud and the rest of the party and turning Eris into dust. Not that Sephiroth would have to. Too soon. It's been 23 years, get over it. When a supernova explodes, the energy radiates outwards in a sphere in all directions. If these arrows represent that energy, look what happens as they travel outwards through space. They're getting further apart, right? Now, that's the same amount of energy, but as it spreads out, it's less energy per area. The intensity of the explosion is decreasing. Hmm, Aria. Run the simulation. Take back what you said about Eris. No. A Sephiroth solar supernova would have to expand outwards one astronomical unit of distance to reach Earth. The intensity then is going to drop based on how much area this expanded sphere has compared to the original when it exploded. We can find just how much by dividing the original power of the blast by the area of the sphere at the new distance. If the Earth's sun exploded in a standard type 1a supernova, by the time that sunlight got to Earth, the sky would suddenly burst with a brilliance of 5 billion times the intensity of regular sunlight. And if you saw it, it certainly would be your final fantasy. When I say that a supernova is a lot brighter than regular old sunlight, you know what I mean, but do you really know what I mean? As King Nerd Randall Monroe of XKCD has pointed out in his wonderful What If book and blog, we truly are not evolved to comprehend the magnitude of a supernova. If a supernova went off at the same distance that the Earth is from the Sun, if you could see it, I mean, you wouldn't see it because you'd be long dead from all the neutrinos hours before, but if you could see it, it would be literally brighter than a nuclear bomb detonating against your eyeball. But then again, seeing is a relative term as much as you'd, you know, your retinas would have just flashed to smoke and your bone marrow would be boiling, but you know what I mean now, right? It takes three gigajoules of directed energy to completely vaporize a human being. These are the things that I know. It would take around a thousand quintillion times more energy than that to boil all of Earth's oceans away. I'm not a supervillain. If Sephiroth really did make Earth's sun go all splody splody and unleashed it on Cloud and the rest of his party, it would- Sample seven is ready for intercept. Oh, just a second. My package is ready. I got it. Just a second. Aria, this moves our schedule way up. Do you know how hard it is to find a pure sample of titanium ice water all the way out here? It was surely worth the price. Yeah, you bet your capacitors it was worth the price, but it's it's gonna have to be our little secret for now. Are you sure that's wise? Well, we don't really have a choice, at least until we get the rest of the samples decontaminated. And I don't I don't trust that Dr. Jeff. I don't like his face or his fins. Like I was saying, if a ridiculous attack like this really took place, then according to my math, four hours and 45 minutes after a silver-haired weirdo initiated it, this attack would reach Cloud and his party. And the intensity of the energy here would completely eradicate them, turn them into formless plasma in less than 250 microseconds. They would be evaporated before their neurons even had time to tell their bodies, uh-oh, a few seconds after that, all of Earth's oceans would have boiled away, and a few hours after that, the entirety of Earth would be erased from universal existence. This is the ultimate in overkill, a real limit break, if you will. And the funny thing is, if your party is accurately leveled during this section, Nothing even happens to you, you just take a little bit of damage. That is ridiculous.
but it is undoubtedly fun. So, I still have more questions about Final Fantasy though, like what even is a chocobo? And how do Blitzball players hold their breath for so long? And why is Final Fantasy XV sponsored by Top Ramen? And why does active battle time suck? Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the facility's very nerdy faculty for their direct support in creating this video. Especially today, I wanna to recognize research assistant Sabrina Pegman and visiting scholar Tony Rubel. If you wanna join the facility faculty, if you wanna join us in our special chat rooms and in our Discord, or right now, literally hundreds of nerds are talking with each other, sorting out their own D&D &D games, giving me episode ideas, you can go to the Patreon linked in the description of this video. And if you support the facility just enough, you get your name on Aria here. And there's there's more and more of you each week, so I'm gonna pass the time by telling you you can't really destroy the sun. At least not really in the way that you think. You can't like point a cosmic sized fire hose at it and hope to put it out or launch a giant ball of iron at it because the sun is basically just an uncontrolled fusion reaction. And if you give it more mass, it's just gonna vaporize all that mass and use it to continue the fusion reaction. So I don't really know how Sephiroth does it. Okay, it's not done yet, so I'm gonna... Thanks for watching.